Hello and thanks for tuning in again. We're going to now take a look at how to do some recon automation. Uh, primarily we're going to be using Nmap to do some scans and then we're going to use a little bit of bash scripting to automate uh, the process of how we actually do those scans. Now there's, you know, you could, you don't have to use bash scripting but I find it easier for someone to get introduced to scripting and then eventually into actual coding uh, using bash because it's really simple. Uh, there's there's not a ton you have to learn to do it and it gives you a nice uh, way to slowly introduce yourself to this stuff. So we'll start out doing manual in map scan, two scans, and then we'll move into it. So let's take a look. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is in map dash st and this range. So this is the entire network and we're scanning for port 21 only because we only care about port 21 because we're looking for FTP and we can see that quickly we find that 116 here is open got tw port 21 open which means probably an FTP server running there 114 also has port 21 open and 111 has port 21 open as well so that tells us these three IPs most likely have an FTP server running on them. Now what we need to do is we need to find out, you know, let's say the second part of your task is to discover what vendor and what version of FTP server is running on each one of these. So in our next scan we'll do that and we're going to actually use a scan called a service identification scan or as you'll hear it also referred to as a version identification. And you do that with simply a little s big V. Little s big V. So let's go ahead and uh, look at how to do that scan. And remember we only care about these three IPs in port 21. So I'm going to show you how to just specify uh, not a range of IPs but just multiple IPs without scanning the whole network. So let's do the SV for our version ID. And this time we're going to do 111, comma, 114, comma, 116. And that means do a SV scan to port 21, let's put the port, port 21 on these three IPs. And you see it goes out and quickly does exactly that. So on 111 we got TNFTPD daemon running. On 114 we got golden FTP server 4.5 and 116 we got FileZilla running there. So this is great but you know the thing is is what if there were 2,000 IPs on this network? How long would it take us to manually scroll through that list and find the open ones? Now you can automate that to an extent just using the grep command and writing your scan out to a greppable format. But what if there turned out to be that you didn't know this, that there were that many IPs? What we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and show you what the bash script looks like that I created to automate a lot of these processes, including the two scans we just did. Now here's, uh, oh, we need to change that SS to an ST because we want to do TCP connect in this case. Now, we're do this is basically our first line and it's telling us the environment that we want to run this script in. We want this to be executed from a bash environment. And then we simply specify a scan in the second line um, and a couple of other things there. But I'll we're going to talk about what each line is after we run the script. We'll go ahead and look at a little PowerPoint presentation I put together that shows us exactly what's happening in each line of this script that you see here. So let's go ahead and save it first. And it's ftp.sh. Um, and then we can do a directory here. Let's see. Or I'm sorry, we're not in Windows. We can do an ls and make sure that we saved it to the right location. Let's 
see. All right. So um, remember, if you're not sure what directory you're in in Linux, you can always find out just by simply typing the pwd command. So we'll do a ls to see if our doc, our script is here, and yes, it is ftp.sh. All right. So let's run that sh ftp.sh, and the script. At least the nmap command ran right, and it, obviously it did everything because we did find our three FTP servers, and we did get the version and vendor information from each one of them as well. Now, there's a lot of things that went on in between the two scans. One of those is we did a lot of grepping and a lot of cutting, and what I'll do is we're going to actually look at the script that generated this and I will uh, try to break it down for you line by line. Now I know somebody's going to say, well, you know, I'm really not interested in learning scripting right now because that's a little more than I care to jump into. I mean, I've never been a coder or a scripter. I never wanted to be. But, you know, if you start learning this stuff now, it won't take you that long to get it. Because again, in this instance, you know, let's talk let's talk about this for a second. Now, if you think about it in this instance, what if again you had thousands of IPs you were trying to scan? And what if there were, you know, several different, maybe ten or twelve different FTP versions out there? You wouldn't want to try to do this manually. So let's go ahead and look at the script and I'll show you step by step exactly what we did. All right, so let's go ahead and break down the bash script and see exactly um, what was happening. First line, bin bash. We're actually specifying which environment variable we want to run in, and that's exactly what's going on there. Second line, we actually did our in map scan. And we put the actual port that we're going to scan. So let's just take the entire line nmap dash st 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Got that going. Dash p for port 21. And then at the end, we did a dash og. And then we wrote it to a file name ftp. And that's exactly what's happening in that line. So let's look at that and think about that for a second. So we did an nmap st, we did a TCP connect scan to the entire range of the network. All right? And then we did a port and specified port 21. And then we want to write the results to a greppable file named FTP and greppable means it's a file that grep likes to, the file type that grep likes to read. In other words, our scan output's going to show up in a way that's conducive for the process of actually grepping something. That's exactly what happened here. Now, honestly, you can grep just about any type of text file, but you know, the, if you write it out to a greppable format, it converts it nicely to where it's set up uh, just to be grep. Now, let's go ahead and look at the next line. The next line in the script, we did a cat FTP, which is a file we just wrote out to and we wrote that to grep. So we wrote this file out to a file named FTP. So that's the file we're catting or reading. And then we're piping the results of what we find in there out to grep. And we're grepping for open, which is going to show us the open, the, the actual IPs that came back with FTP open. And then we're writing the results of that cat command to that file. We're writing that out to another file named FTP1. Now, on this next line here, we're actually catting the FTP file, write it out to grep, and then the second line, we're catting the FTP1, which we wrote out from the first catting command, and this time, instead of piping it to cat again, we're piping it out to actual cut, and we're cutting field 2 and using a delimiter of a colon. Okay, so the delimiter in this case is the colon, and the parentheses just specify what the delimiter is. 
And then we're taking the results of that, piping it to cut again, and this time we're cutting field one, and we're using a delimiter of a parentheses facing left. And we're writing the results of all of that out to another file named FTP2. Now that's pretty much what we did with that entire piece there on the cutting. So we should have, in the end, we should have a file named FTP2 that includes just IP addresses, IP addresses only. Now let's look at the actual scripting part. So we're saying for name in, for name in what, um, cat FTP2. So if we cat the FTP2 file, we want to take, we want to make whatever the results of that is, we want to assign that to the variable of this name. So we're saying assign the variable of dollar sign name to the resulting output of running cat against the FTP2 file for name in is just like saying for whatever comes out a result of, of running reading this cat file and writing it out reading cat FTPT write that or go ahead and do that the next thing we're saying do is we're saying so we've assigned a variable and now we want to do something to the variable what we're doing is we're running the nmap command using a dash SV only scanning port 21 and we know that SB does version identification, and P is port 21. Uh, we know that that's FTP. So we're saying here for name in the results of, we're basically assigning the name variable to, to the results of catting FTP2. And what that's going to do is it's going to run nmap against each line in that FTP2 file, and each line should basically just be uh, simply an uh, IP address. So each it should be one one line per IP address. We should just have a list of IPs and it's going to run that against each one of those. Now what you should probably do is take some time, go back, look through that script and see if you can piece together what I'm talking about here. If you can't, shoot us an email, uh, let us know and we'll talk about it some more. <laughs>